Hello and welcome to iNerdius and the Science Fiction Randomly playlist. In this video, I want to talk about three books about space. These three books, Dragonfly, Moonshot, and Endurance. I kind of feel like anybody who's into science fiction, uh, at least who's really into science fiction, you know, space opera or, uh, you know, near future uh, hard SF, into, into books like The Martian, for example, would be interested in reading about actual uh, space exploration. And so these books are three that I've read that I really liked, and I feel anybody who is a science fiction fan might want to consider reading these. And the first one is Moonshot, uh, The Inside Story of America's Race to the Moon um, by Alan Shepard and Deke Slayton with an introduction by Neil Armstrong. This is really, really cool. It is uh, uh, just an inside account by these guys about the training, the selection and the training, their experiences going into space uh, to uh, prepare for uh, going to the moon and then their experiences um, in the missions that they actually took part in. And just the inner workings of NASA at that time during the uh, space program, the Mercury program, and then the Apollo program. It's got some great black and white photographs. I mean, this one I like on the bottom here when they're looking at moon rocks that were brought back. Just a good, it's like, a, it's history, but it's it's also personal um, uh, accounts of what happened. Remember, this was happening during the Cold War, and so there was the... Um, you know, the space race against the Soviet Union and very, very interesting, uh, very, very interesting book to read. And I really enjoyed reading it. Um, and that's Moonshot by, uh, like I said, Alan Shepard, Deke Slayton. And then um, I highly recommend this book, Dragonfly, An Epic Adventure of Survival in Outer Space by Brian Burrow. And this is about the... Uh, the um, experiences of astronauts uh, involved and, and also, you know, um, mission control people involved in sending American astronauts um, to the Russian or the Soviet space station Mir, M-I-R. As it says here in this riveting account of the ill-fated American missions to Mir, tells the incredible true story of how a Russian-American crew narrowly survived almost every trauma an astronaut could imagine. Fire, power blackouts, chemical leaks, docking failures, nail-biting spacewalks, and constant mechanical breakdowns. All climaxing in a dramatic mid-space collision that left everyone on board scrambling for their lives. Um, this is really interesting. I, I've dog-eared pages here. Um, you know, it, it's just talking about like how one of the astronauts, because he's being overworked and nobody in nobody on the ground um, in mission control seems to understand, you know, what the problem is. And he, he feels like nobody's listening to him and and nobody really cares. And he gets really depressed. And the cosmonauts who are on Mir with him, um, you know, they notice that and they actually um, they actually alert uh, the American uh, space space program, they actually alert the people at Mission Control that that this could be a problem. But he does eventually come out of it, and um, it's, you know, it's pretty interesting to uh, to read about it and, and understand that, yeah, it's not all just um, technological, you know, uh, innovations. And the problems are, aren't all just technological. Sometimes they are psychological. Um, and that was really interesting. But it's kind of funny because there's a quote here later on where uh, former Skylab astronaut Joe Curran, um, this is in a conversation that they're having about psychologists, and he says, Son, Curran said, you got to understand, the crews won't be happy until the last psychologist has been strangled on the entrails of the last flight surgeon. <laughs> and that's because... Uh, it, the, either the flight surgeon or the psychologist could basically sideline somebody, uh, sideline somebody's career, keep them from going into space if they uh, turned in a bad report about either their psychological or their uh, physical, um, you know, uh, profile that uh, could be problematic in space. So 
pretty interesting um, to read about that, especially since I'm getting a PhD in psychology. I don't think the organization is quite that way anymore, but um, I don't know. And then later on, there's, they're talking more about the uh, struggle between management and the astronauts. Um, most of the problems originate within the organization. Do the, do the crew and the ground feel supported by management? Are they talking enough with management? That's where 80% of the problems originate. So you can see that there are issues um, going on. And of course, we, you know, this is, this is, um, takes on a whole new meaning when you think about the Challenger and, and how the uh, Space Shuttle Challenger, um, you know, the, the fate of the Space Shuttle Challenger was connected to uh, decisions by management. Um, and so I'll be doing another video on that, actually. I've read a very interesting uh, academic uh, uh, re uh, report uh, about the issues surrounding uh, that that tragedy, basically. Here, there's just talking about the the buildup of clutter and garbage and stuff on the on near the the Soviet space station, and and the arguments that the Americans and the Russians got into about where to put everything. Um, <laughs> You know, really, uh, the kinds of things you don't really think about, I think, when you think about astronauts in space. And so really, really good book, really interesting for anybody who wants to read about a, a chapter in the space, in the history of our space program that I don't think a lot of people are really all that aware of. And then lastly, really love this book, Endurance by Scott Kelly, about, uh, as it says here, a year in space, a lifetime of discovery. And he wrote this after spending a year on the International Space Station. And this is just chock full of all kinds of interesting uh, tidbits and, and ideas and thoughts, especially if you want to write um, science fiction about, uh, especially if it's near space or even just about um, a human being uh, aboard a space station, perhaps alone um, or among you know, non-humans, for example, among aliens. Uh, I think uh, Dragonfly would also be good for that. Um, you know, just the things that can go wrong. So what I found most fascinating about this was the uh, discussions about what, um, what Kelly would feel and uh, what would be happening to him when the CO2 scrubbers weren't working uh, as properly as well as they should. There were only two, apparently, uh, on the International Space Station, and only one of them was working uh, at any given time. They were apparently really complicated and complex pieces of machinery to have to um, repair, which he had to do on occasion. And also, the, you know, they, they worked less well when there were more people on the space station, as you would imagine. Um, you know, more people, more CO2 to scrub out of the air. And so what would happen is, when the CO2 levels got too high, his his um, cognitive abilities would suffer and he wouldn't notice it. In order to notice that your cognitive abilities are suffering, you need to have a certain level of cognitive ability to notice it. And when he, they got to the point where he was really having trouble, he wouldn't even understand what was going on because he couldn't. And so one great example of this is he was um, talking to his wife and she was concerned that he wasn't being himself. I think he was being kind of down, uh, maybe depressive or something, um, maybe a little short-tempered. Uh, and she asked him what the CO2 what the CO2 levels were, and he looked and realized that that was the problem. That was really fascinating. The kind of thing that I think most um, writers wouldn't think to put in their fiction. Maybe Arthur C. Clarke, you know. Um, but generally speaking, I don't think it's the kind of thing that a lot of science fiction writers are aware of um, as be even being an issue. So really, really cool. The psychological stuff about um, being alone on the International Space Station in between uh, crews coming up to you know, one crew leaving and one coming back and just the way it all worked out. He was alone sometimes. Um, really, really fascinating book. Highly, highly recommend this book as well. And so there you have it, three books that I think uh, any any science fiction fan, especially if you're into hard science fiction and 
science fiction about people in space, especially if it's near future, like The Martian, for example, or, you know, the books by my friend Alan Steele is another one, another good example of uh, near future, um, near space science fiction. So highly recommend these books. Thank you very much.